So in Sweden, the Fourth Reich is, uh, Himmler is going to try and, and uh, negotiate with the British to overthrow Hitler, to be, be replaced by Himmler. Um, in Sweden, Sweden, um, as a neutral but fascist sympathizing country, they, the British uh, head of the legation in Sweden is a person by the name of Mao, who's connected to Hamburg banking families and city of London banking families. So Himmler is negotiating with uh, the head of the British legation, Mallet here, to bring about the uh, a peace, uh, a detente. And this is similar to when um, when earlier in the war, these same British fascist sympathizers were um, the Nazis were sending out feelers to see if they could formulate a peace plan with the British, with these British fascist sympathizers. Now, what we end up with is Mallet negotiating with Himmler. But it's interesting because his Mallet family is, it's a British family, but it's connected to Hamburg banking families. And it is also has a wing of that family in the United States of America, the Mallet Prevost family. The Mallet Prevost was the Wall Street law firm from which all the organizers of the fascist coup against FDR were employed by. So we can clearly see that the Mallets, whether they're in Britain, Hamburg, or the United States, is um, aligning themselves with um, a form of fascism although it's not like the populist, anti-capitalist fascism of the folk or of the folks or of like the working class fascists, their system seems to be considerably different from what is basically nothing more than a disguise for feudalism under these fascist um, viewpoints and their, or their plans. So the Fourth Reich is being formulated and in negotiations between British fascists and German fascists. And they're, it's centered around Hamburg banking families and city of London banking families. One final area I want to go over is called the Black International. Black International is a fascist, um, like the Red International, it's Fascist International, different fascist uh, revolutionaries participating in it. Um, it's international in scope, it's all, and it has to do with um, largely instigating instability in 1960s and 70s Italy instability in 1960s and 70s France, instability throughout South America, direct aid to fascist dictatorships in South America. What the Black International does is divide societies to create civil wars using what is known as the strategy of tension. The strategy of tension is to introduce into society as many cleavages, as much uh, even violence, to divide people into poles. And once again, in creating a civil war, the strategy of tension is basically, and we'll learn about this later, the Nazi creation of reflexive control to, to polarize societies and divide societies and get the masses to do what um, the fascists want you to do. Directly related to the strategy of tension is a policy of infiltration and intoxication.
Infiltration, well, that's obvious. They're going to take Nazis and they're going to put them in, say, a communist group. They're going to take Nazis and put them in a Republican group. They're going to take Nazis and put them in a Democratic group, and they're never going to tell them they're Nazis. Infiltration, it changes how struck uh, you get in there and you, you mess with how the, the people interact with each other. You mess with the, the organizational structure. You try and break things apart. Intoxication. And this is where we get straight to the point of Nazi neuro weapons development is in post-war Nazi neuro weapon development is aimed specifically at intoxication. And what they mean by intoxication is to poison people's minds and to get them confused. So you would they will do things that the Nazis want instead of doing the things that they want. And this is basically the basis of reflexive control. The Black International, although known for being active in the 1960s and 70s, it's constantly active everywhere and has been active it's, um, even um, during the Black Rex where you can read in German manuals on, on these same topics and you can trace it out from the 19-teens that the Black International is really based in, in the Reichswehr uh, guerrilla warfare against the occupation in, in the war valley by the French, say, after World War I. And very similar um, guerrilla campaigns that the Black Reichswehr engaged in, like in the Baltic states as well, under um, a leader named Earhart, who had a, a naval brigade. Earhart was a Black Reichswehr that um, was very active in the Baltics, where there is a large German ethnic population. The Black International was led by a person named Otto Skorzeny. During the war, Otto Skorzeny was an SS commando. He was, uh, he was captured after the war. At the end of the war, Himmler actually appointed him to head up SS intelligence. So obviously Himmler had him in mind to continue the, the fight, to be like the general. Basically what Himmler was to Hitler, he kind of viewed, we kind of get this picture that Skorzeny was viewed similar to Himmler. He was like Himmler's Himmler, so to speak. Skorzeny was like supposed to be his, his muscle, the guy that got things done. Skorzeny would go around, like I said, he was imprisoned after the war, but he escaped with the collusion of Allied forces. And right after that war, he was spotted in the United States training American Special Forces. Then later he went back to uh, Europe and started fomenting trouble in various countries like Spain, and France, and Italy. It's interesting that in France, he was caught by journalists infiltrating communist groups and was outed as this Nazi commando. Um, so we can see how infiltration and intoxication is directly you know, implemented by these people. Their, their sole purpose in infiltrating these communist groups in France was to create a civil war. And this was during the student um, protest movement in the 60s and 70s. So we can see how things are always constantly being, you know, it doesn't matter what the issue is, if they can figure out a way to get into, into that and divide it and make it really extreme, they will do this just for the sole purpose of trying to foment civil war and bring in their own power base. Uh, that's it for chapter one. Uh, this was basically all of chapter one. I We'll move on to chapter two next, which is a general overview of information warfare.